Well, Diego, thank you for talking to us today. I'd like to start right at the very beginning because Peru isn't a country people think about in squash terms. So how did you start your career? Yeah, I I started because of my dad. He he used to he still plays a lot and when I was very young he always took me took me to all his tournaments and and yeah, so since I was born I've been I've been watching squash and learning from him and yeah, that's how, how I started. It's, I know it's not very big in Peru, but he would just uh, take me to all the South American tournaments and Pan American tournaments to watch him play. And, and since then, I just uh, fell in love with the sport. So was it always something that you thought, this is what I want to do, I want to be like my dad? Yeah, I, I did a lot of different sports too. But yeah, like until, until I was 12 or 13, I played squash and tennis. and. And yeah, I just uh, I just chose the squash. I I really liked uh, the game, and I just uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it. And was there ever a time where you thought if this isn't working out? I'm doing something wrong. Like the career isn't going how I want it to. Um, at the start, I think I improved very fast. Like I like from 16 until 19, I think I. I I kept improving and going up the rankings and and yeah then when I was 20 21 I think I I got a bit stuck in the first when I got just gone in the top 20 I I I got stuck there for a little bit and then uh, a little after that when I was 21 22 I I stayed around 8 to 12 for for a while and and I had a few injuries and yeah, that was the that was the toughest part for, for sure because uh, I was improving so fast and then I just got stuck there. I think it was the first time that that happened to me. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm just happy I I kept uh, I kept uh, positive and and yeah, I think it was the last two years that uh, that I actually bro broke into that top top eight. Yeah, and this, this two years, I think everyone would agree we've seen a huge improvement in the way you're playing. Why do you think that is? I think I was um, I wasn't the most professional, like from like 20 to 23. I also had a lot of injuries, um, and I didn't really take good care of of my body, and I would just keep playing with injuries, and and I wouldn't do the right recovery, the right training, and. I just I always thought uh, I'm good and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get there at some point. But then once you're getting older, it it it, it became tougher and tougher. And then it was the last two years that I said uh, this is the time where where I'm gonna get old and I'm, ne I'm never gonna get there. So was it was it like a one moment where you suddenly realized I need to start taking better care of myself? Yeah, I, at the end of 2020, I had a really bad hip injury and. And I didn't know if I had to get a surgery. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to come back to like my, if I was gonna be fit, fit enough to to be in the top. And then I just I found the right people around me. Uh, I always had my dad support, supporting me and Jonathan. And then I I started working with Wild too. And I found uh, Cassiano. He's my fitness coach. That uh, I went there and. In, Jan in January 2021, and with my hip injury, and he was—he's one of the biggest parts of my, yeah, of me getting back to, like, to be healthy again, and and also Jim that travels with me—he's my physio. So yeah, I, I just, I just have a, a big team around me that that helped me, helped me in the last couple of years to get to get where I am now. And if you had to look back over your career so far and pick out one favorite moment, do you have one? I mean, I have a, I have a few actually. Like, I mean, winning the British Junior like under 17s was crazy. With it was just me and my dad, and no one knew like about us or even where Peru was <laughs> or anything. But uh, yeah, I think that was a uh, one of the most important moments of my career, and then. After that, winning the Panam Games in in Peru in 2019 was huge for me, and then well, last week winning the TOC was was unbelievable. Yeah, and if if results go 
your way this year, there's a chance that you could be finishing the season as the world number one. Is that something that you think about? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, it's it's been my my dream and my goal since since I started playing pro, and of course, I think about it. But right now, I just I'm actually just enjoying playing. I'm healthy now. I, I have no pain anywhere in my body, which is like. It's very good because I've never felt like this because I've never done the, the right things to take care of my body and now I just, I don't have any pain, I'm feeling good and, and the results are, yeah, are, are going my way right now. I think I'm, I'm playing good squash and hopefully I can keep doing this the rest of the, of the season and hopefully finish in, in number one. And what do you think it would mean to Peru and South America more generally if, if you did make it to world number one? I mean, it would be huge. I, uh, no one, no one got there before. I mean, we have, we have Miguel. He's been, he's like an idol in South America. I mean, I grow, I grew up watching him. He got to number four. We're very good friends. I, I always followed him, and, and yeah, I think he, he opened the doors for, for me and a lot of South American players. And yeah, I hope I can, I can get there for me, for him, for everyone in South America.